that sounds rather naive and thinking let's do a sofa <laughs> looking back on it now I think Woo! but I'm, I'm proud of what we've done but there was a lot more work in it than I had envisaged we have a very strong neighborhood group on our street we all got together and everybody pledged their support both financially and motivationally it seemed a possibility because I had a sculptural background and could draw and Ali had a background and expertise in mosaics so we thought with the help of the rest of the community we could get something done. The neighbourhood had already agreed that City to the Sea was going to be the theme because the track goes from the city to the sea where we are. I then went up and down Day's track from both directions and took note of what significant features there were along the way and aligned them with what was meaningful with that group really. Then I just put a few little sketches down on paper, showed them to Ali and see what she thought and then we showed them to the rest of the group and everyone was enthusiastic so it was all go from there. I knew it wasn't going to be a matter of just having a weekend workshop and everybody sticking down a few pieces. It actually required people who knew how to do mosaicing and cut things to a design. So I cast the net a bit wider and I do belong to a Sunday mosaic group and they all professed their willingness to join in. They were probably naive as well. <laughs> when we all saw the design we let out a few four letter words. Everyone looked slightly aghast and said, come on we can do this, we know we can. So we got ourselves together and um, we did. I'd produced a drawing that I think was probably very difficult for them to conceive of initially and so I had to be with them and get involved every day I could be there and that was a really satisfying part of it. One of our good neighbours who's a potter, Paul, he decided to get the ball rolling and make the couch which was fantastic. He went down to one of the charity stores and got a cheap sofa he cut the arm off one end because I said I wanted a chaise long. I thought you could probably fit more people on it. He and another neighbour, Duncan, um, covered it in chicken wire and then we had a neighbourhood working bee and we all got stuck in and concreted it. In hindsight, probably not as perfectly as would have made the job later on easier. Like at the bottom we had a lot of umpy bumpy bits. Making sure nobody's going to fall through. <laughs> we think it works now. But in general the shape was pretty good. The whole project or the drawing aspect of it um, began with coming to terms with the proportions of the sofa that had been created and that meant trying to roughly measure the sofa, getting the proportions reasonably accurate but then I had to wrap large sheets of white paper around the sofa then cut them up into sections and then divide my ideas within those sections so that we had a continuous and integrated organic sort of imagery that flowed right around the sofa. We made the sofa on our street in a driveway because it would have been too difficult to make it up the hill. We let it settle and let the concrete cure and then a few months later when the track had been finished they very kindly made a platform for it, strapped it on and it wove its way up the hill very shakily until it found its resting place. It's just yeah. that's the spot right. and we're going to have a wee bit of runoff off the front as well yeah. and slightly tilted that way. That's what we're going to try and achieve yeah. yeah. Actually this is a pretty good <laughs> view really. Yeah, it's fantastic. We photocopied the drawings in various sections given to individuals to work on in their own homes or studios and then we would bring them together and integrate the pieces to produce the whole form. So we had about eight to ten people working on the design. I felt a bit like a factory art worker going around dropping off tiles and bits of mesh. Yeah, it looks great, actually the glass stuff came up well didn't it? It almost looks translucent. Yeah, yeah I'm happy with that, with the choice. I think when it catches yeah. the light so the day... It made it know. difficult in that you couldn't see the whole design together as it was developing. If you were doing your own design and you had everything in one place you'd be able to probably make slightly better artistic decisions. Pencil is much more flexible and that you can overlay colours, change them subtly, incorporate tone. It's not so well defined. I didn't want it to be a paint by numbers exercise for the mosaic artists. I wanted them to be able to interpret some of the colour and tonal relationships. So we made the actual design on mesh 
because it would have been far too difficult to do it up on the hill. This way we could do it before they were ready for us to go up there. Plus physically it was a lot easier and it meant people could do okay. the designs anyway. in their own home. You have the cardboard, then you have the pattern, and then you have plastic, and then you have the mesh, because otherwise you would be gluing onto the paper pattern, which wouldn't be so good when you wanted to lift it off. And then we carried that mesh on big boards up the hill to the couch when we were ready to glue it on. We decided to start with the flat part of the seat because that would be easiest. One of the things I was a little bit apprehensive about was gluing quite large designs onto a vertical concrete rigid structure. As it turned out, the way we did it, it was fine. But we started with the flat seat and that's where we realised, uh oh, we're going to have to cut, which was a bit messy to start with. One person did a lot of the mixing, so we ended up with a consistent mix, put it on, and wiped the bits off. That worked pretty well, we just cleaned as we went. The first couple of days were really stressful, just figuring out how it was going to fit. Then we moved on to one of the sides and that's again where we found that it was too short for our measurement we had to cut. We also found that it was good to wrap some of the design around and over so that there was more of a flowing movement. It was quite a challenging site to work on because it was on a slope. We were lying on gravel. It was quite hot even though it was winter. We'll just have to make some more pieces, won't we? It was just hard work and then we were dodging the rain as well. It was a very strange weather period. It's great. Fabulous. When we came to the back, which had the largest pieces and the longest drop, as I said, we were a bit worried that it might all slide down, but actually with having the right consistency of thin set and just holding it I think because we had the mesh there as well, it just seemed to hold against the concrete and the concrete wasn't so smooth that it ran off. We started at the bottom and then at least the top bits had something to come down onto. That part of it worked surprisingly smoothly. The amazing thing about a team is that everybody has different strengths and it's using those strengths. So we had nicknames for people. One woman who's very careful and responsible, she was the health and safety officer. So she'd go around checking saying, oh, there's a sharp bit here, oh, this bit needs cutting. And that's really good because I'm not as detailed focused as she is. Somebody else was really good at just keeping on, keeping on and we called her the Goop Queen because she'd do all the mixing. A question that a lot of people ask is how long did it take us? I think from when we first saw the design was about late February and it was the end of August that the whole thing was completed. Yeah, yeah I think it could come down a bit. Well, we can cut a bit off the bottom. It was a long process and the last few weeks, again, my naivety meant that I thought we would have the whole thing up on the couch up the track in two weekends, well that was laughable, it took us three weeks. It would absolutely be easier to do it in situ. Doing it up a hill added a humongous amount of work, but having said that, being up there the view is just stupendous and it takes it to another level because you're sitting there and you're looking out at the whole of the Tasman Bay and the mountains and it's just glorious and it's almost like you're making a pilgrimage to get there and it makes it worthwhile. Where am I to go? keep going along this middle bit here, cleaning. It was always my aim to make something that was comfortable, that was well connected with the community so that they could relate to the narrative and that would give something back to whoever walked the track in the future. A refuge, you know, a place of rest and reflection. It was very gratifying working on the track because although it wasn't open at that stage, people were coming down, they were all feeling so happy that the track was open. And then they got quite a surprise when they saw us working on the couch. So we got lots and lots and lots of positives that also kept us going. I think the surprise element of seeing a, a mosaic couch in the middle of this track was part of it. One man said, is this permanent? <laughs> which having had an eight and a half ton digger to bring it up the track, I said, I certainly hope so. Just see it open again. Yes. 
So many people have suggested that they feel ownership of that project and what more could you want? I mean, for me it was just a marvellous project to feel connected with people I really enjoy working with in my local community. Thank you everyone for coming. I have much pleasure in declaring this wonderful community couch open and ready to be enjoyed. Project, I totally recommend it. It's great for networking, a sense of identity for the area, for the pride that you get in doing something and the satisfaction that you get in working together and being able to utilise everybody's skills and for them to feel good about it as well. I just think that community projects are just, just wonderful for all the benefits that there are. And we quite like the lumps and bumps in our couch now. It's kind of settled into the hillside and it looks like it belongs there. It's not formal and sitting straight and stiff and smooth.